next one? Yeah, yeah. We'll just follow the, we'll follow the thing so people can follow along at home. Great. Thank you. Uh, thanks for everyone coming <coughs> out. I kind of, uh, you never know how kind of a crowd you're going to get on the second day of a conference. Everyone's a little tired. They were at Mr. Purple last night. I saw some of you uh, who enjoyed yourselves. Um, thanks for coming. We're going to talk a little bit about the insurance, and I'm really uh, pleased to be joined on stage uh, by two of our partners in the, uh, uh, it was discussed last night, uh, yesterday, for those of you who saw Roy's discussion yesterday about the, the climate coalition that Lemonade Foundation had uh, built up. We're proud to be a part of it. Hanover's part, proud to be a part of it. We're going to talk maybe just a few minutes about that, but I think we're going to then uh, go into the broader conversation about what insurance can mean for Web3 and uh, why some of the big companies are there. So first of all, I'll just let these guys introduce themselves. Tell us a little bit about uh, where you are, what your companies are here for, and why you're excited. Yeah, Please, Lawrence. Thank you. Uh, so my name is Lorenz. I'm working for Hanover Re. Um, probably nobody knows what that firm does. Um, here, guys, uh, we are the third largest reinsurance firm. Um, we do two things. One is what everybody always says, we insure insurers. So there are events that are so big that even an insurer cannot carry it. So for example, Ian right now in Florida, um, we help out with catastrophe risks. And then the other thing is we do capital management for them. So the idea is a little bit like in the stock market. So you don't want to buy only one stock, but you want to buy several stocks in order that your max loss can be limited, right? And this is what we do. So we have people all over the world who ride risks like cars, houses, soccer players, planes, ships, uh, farmers, uh, all kinds of these things in all countries over the world. And if something happens on the news, typically we have to pay, but we don't have to pay so much that it bankrupts us. So we can actually hold up much less capital than the primary insurers to hold the same risk. And this makes it a profitable relationship with a B2B, with a primary insurer and a reinsurer to work together. Excellent. Thank you. And we've also got Roy here uh, from the Lemonade Foundation. <laughs> Hi, everyone. Uh, so first of all, thanks so much for your time and uh, great to see everyone. So Lemonade, uh, the insurance company, is a direct-to-consumer uh, insurance company uh, headquartered here in New York. We provide uh, car insurance, pet insurance, couple of other things. We're trading on the New York Stock Exchange. Um, but we also have a nonprofit arm, and I work for Lemonade. Uh, that's my day job. We also have a nonprofit arm. It's called the Lemonade Foundation, which was founded and funded by Lemonade. And that's what I spend uh, too many evenings and weekends doing. Too many as, as far as my wife is concerned, I think. <laughs> Um, that's, uh, it's kind of a more of a passion project, but what we're doing together with these amazing partners here, and we talked about it a bit yesterday, and we can talk about it more if, if you're interested, is we are basically building a, uh, one of the first, I think, real world insurance uh, products on the blockchain. We're going to be providing um, crop insurance to subsistence farmers in the developing world. Again, together with Hanover and Chainlink. Um, super interesting project that's going to be piloting in the next, uh, sometime in the, this quarter, and then scaling next year. Um, that's it. Thanks. Yeah, no, that's great. Thank you. Uh, so we were talking a little bit earlier. I think that a lot of people he here are in the DeFi space, or they're builders, or they're going to build apps, and they don't necessarily understand the role that insurance how critical, I guess, insurance is in kind of underwriting most of the other businesses in the world, right? Most of the businesses in the world that operate in any capacity have a floor underneath them because of the industry that you guys represent. So it's interesting to me, at least, to see some of the biggest companies in the world uh, embracing Web3. I mean, the third largest reinsurer in the world, for those of you who don't know, that's a big deal. <laughs> for whatever reason, they're all within about you know, 50 uh, kilometers of one another in, in between Switzerland and Germany in this <laughs> area. You guys are all kind of centered in there. But to have someone like yourselves involved in Web3 is it, it's, you, you're the first in. Uh, I think that's a, <coughs> I think that's a, we're back. That's a, that's an amazing uh, statement in and of itself. So if you could tell us a little bit about why Hanover would be so excited, why you guys are kind of at the forefront. What do you see 
the space evolving to and, and why are you eager to be one of the first ones in it? Yeah, um, so for this particular project, I think the, the first reason is pretty clear. It's, it's purpose and partnership. So, I mean, we have been approached to, to support this and we're doing something really good, I think. So we're giving insurance to the people in need for climate change. Yeah. So this is something where we really like to support this thing. Um, and then the second thing is, is learning. So um, truth be told, I'm, I'm not a, um, somebody who, who bought Bitcoin in 2010 or something like that. So I'm just with the industry for a year or something like that. And I've done some uh, complicated things in my life. But I would say crypto is a little bit of rocket science. So I think it's quite difficult to understand everything around it and so on. And we actually like to do something in order to be able to understand what is happening here. Um, a little bit more than just like the very top layer of everybody explaining what Bitcoin is in five minutes. So we learned about yeah, what is a, now what is a proof of reserve or what is a stable coin or something like that. And uh, actually talking to you guys, we really learned much more than we could from a slide deck or from a, a book or something like that. Yeah. And uh, yeah, learning while doing something good is, is really awesome. It's, it's, so what have you learned? Teach us everything. You've got two minutes. <laughs> everything you know. <laughs> what, what are the observations that stand out to you the most? So um, what I have learned the, the most is to explain uh, Bitcoin in like three, three different kinds of levels to my grandma, <laughs> to uh, my friends, and to our mathematicians. We have a lot of mathematicians. And um, yeah, I have to explain it all the time in order to understand or give, give, give out, distribute the understanding a little bit. But I have learned that it's a very creative, very fast moving uh, industry um, that rethinks a lot of very core concepts, sometimes actually in a very fundamental way. So insurance, for example, has gotten really complex because of legacy stuff and so on. And then if you just build an insurance concept on protocol, it's actually very simple. Yeah, you just have an NFT that gets triggered through an event and you have a risk pool. And then you have to model the connect between the event and the policy and you have to model the, um, the connection between the risk pool and the policy and the one between the carrier and the risk pool. Right. And that's it, right? Yeah. Well, I don't know. You're the insurance person, but yes. Yes, you tell me if that is, that, that's, that's what's critical, yes? I mean, building up these things from scratch again, like, Gets, gets everybody back to fundamentals, I would say. Okay, very cool. And Roy, I, obviously your day job is on the Lemonade side, and we're talking about the Lemonade Foundation side, but just your experience in Web3, your experience, your lifelong in experience in insurance, also in technology, you're more of a tech guy as well. Uh, are there holes uh, in the Web3 infrastructure that companies like, maybe not yourselves particularly, but that Hanover can be helping, or maybe someone in the audience is gonna build some cool uh, widgets to fill those holes. Are there, are there areas that you think need some innovation still? Definitely. So first of all, I think one of the interesting things about crypto or uh, Web3 in general is that maybe for people here, it feels like this is very advanced and you know things are moving really fast. But in reality, these are very early days from a, a perspective of like Hanavari or from even from Lemonade's perspective. These are very, very early days. There are specific use cases for insurance that are super interesting, like the one we're working on for crop insurance, parametric insurance, which really brings a, a new level of kind of like solving problems that really need solutions in the real world. There are other things in the world of insurance that I think are, are pretty far off yet. But that's, I think, an opportunity for everyone here that's interested in insurance because there's so much yet to be unsolved. There's so much yet to be fixed. I'll just give you one example that we mentioned in our kind of chat earlier. So the whole idea of reinsurance or the whole idea of insurance is that kind of like with banking, uh, you have capital reserves. It's called solvency or Basel III, that kind of thing. An insurance company doesn't hold all their money at one point to cover all the potential risks, right? So if we have $100 million of insured value, we don't have a bank account with $100 million, right? On chain, 
that's not the way it works, right? Everything is either collateralized, fully collateralized, or over collateralized. So in my mind, that's a super interesting problem to solve because until that problem is solved, it'll be very difficult for companies like Hanover, like, like Lemonade, to use the same capital efficiency uh, on chain. And that's just like one aspect of it. Again, there are other aspects about how do you know, and these are things that Chainlinker could be super interested in solving. How do you make sure that the data from the real world comes onto chain? How, how do you make sure it's correct? In which cases can you do it? Parametric maybe is easier. Other cases, it may be more complicated. But I think there are a lot of things that still need solutions. So I'm kind of very excited by the fact that we can all kind of like this community can all work together to try to solve these things. But the so like in the real world, sorry, that's not, that's not what I meant to say. In the traditional world, um, the reason why you don't have to over collateralize is because people, I guess it's, it's trusted rather than trustless, right? So you actually know whom you're working with. Exactly. Is that, is there a model there where you can get a, a, a trusted connection in a trustless society? Is that how we get to under collateralized positions? I mean, is that what you guys, I don't know, I'm just kind of throwing this out there. What are your thoughts about actually knowing your counterparty, having the data you need to make, the, to underwrite it at the levels you need to without in a fully collateralized position? I, I feel like that's an obvious thing that has to happen if it's really going to compete with, uh, with the, broader, uh, uh, the broader world. I don't know. So I, I haven't thought much about it, but um, I think it's a really interesting question. And when I think about it right now, so even in the real world, <laughs> like it's not guaranteed that everything will be paid back because yeah. we have these re realistic disaster scenarios that is like an earthquake under Tokyo or so. We say this can happen once in a thousand years or so, and then we can't even carry that anymore. But the regulator tells us which kind of risks we are allowed to, to take. And they, they tell us you can take a risk that is, happens one in a thousand years, right? So they try to quantify that thing. And I think crypto would give us a chance, for example, to just quantify it. Where you say like, yeah, uh, they take over the risk in 89% of the cases. And in 2%, you will have to pay the thing yourself, for example, right? So, uh, we are, for example, we, we, are, uh, um, we have been working together with a firm that does parametric insurance for cloud downtime. And um, what they do is whenever the cloud goes down, they do a business interruption for businesses because then you can't work, right? Um, and we, we are thinking about what happens if the whole world goes down, if all the clouds go down, like nobody could carry it, right? So you could write a protocol that carries all the cases, but the one where everybody goes down, right? Do you, that, that policy, those policies exist, though people can buy cloud insurance today, right? So that's, that's not a far reach from there to blockchain protocol insurances, right? I mean, no, uh, blockchain would just make it transparent. And right. you can sign it transparently and make, yeah. it, make it much mm -hmm. easier, yeah. yeah. Okay. We, time, we actually have time for one question. I don't know if there, oh, someone got r right on that. Oh my God, look at this person right over here. We got a hat on, we're gonna bring a, we're gonna bring a mic over. Uh, we're gonna just do the one question. I, there's so many of you, which is great, but we'll definitely find some time to talk to everybody just afterwards as well, but please give us the, the question. Thanks, yeah, so speaking of the many, many challenges to sort out over time um, as we integrate blockchain, um, with all due respect to subsistence farmers, they're probably not super tech savvy. How do you get payouts? How do you get people to, how do you plan to get people to engage? Roy, that's probably you. Uh, that's a great question. Um, they don't need to, or let me put it this way. The way we think about blockchain and crypto for this use case, uh, it's infrastructure, like AWS. So the consumer, the farmer, uh, uses the same exact interface that they use, their same feature phone that they use for like M-Pesa or mobile banking in, in East Africa to interact with the blockchain. They don't even know necessarily that it's the blockchain. We don't have to explain that to them. It's like when you use a certain service, you don't really care if it's AWS or Google Cloud or Azure, you don't know. It's like, it's a platform. So that's the way we think about it. Uh, I think over time, that's where crypto needs to be. Right? So even for people in the, in the developed world, like the, in, in the more people who are like native to Web3, 
I, I'm probably not saying this. Like, no offense to anyone, we still need to work on the user experience a bit. You know, it's not amazing yet. It's getting better, but it's still, so even for me, it's difficult, right? Yeah. So we are at time, but I think that is really the story. The, the, we know we're winning when people are using blockchain and not knowing that they're using blockchain. I think it's really as simple as that. Uh, we're all going to be right over there, uh, and we can keep these conversations going. I'm sorry we couldn't get to everyone's questions, but to be honest, I wasn't expecting such a great crowd, so thank you so much for coming. <laughs>